if I could address any questions you have about boys' rules. Well, I spent time, most of my classes I teach made, made up primarily, not exclusively by, by boys, but That's primarily by boys. Two thirds boys. to three quarters? Right. Sure. And, uh, you know, so there's a connection between my professional life and boys in my personal life as well. Right. So. Are your boys in mainstream classes or are they also special? Actually, uh, they're in, uh, yeah, they're in, they're, they get services, but uh, right. uh, otherwise they're in, uh, ones in service, but it's cool. Right. Also, is a little unreasonable, isn't it, to do the preventive measure um, with little boys? I find elementary school teachers doing it all the time. They're doing violence prevention with first and second grade boys, so they don't turn out to be murderers. And I think um, I have some strong objections to treating first and second grade boys as 
accept, to remember that for every boy, the emotional foundation of his life is his mother, typically. Um, and when men are dying on the battlefield, as every military historian has ever written about the battlefield, about battle and death, on what are men, who are men called for when they're dying on That's, that's, you're there, that's the foundation, and it's the trust and the warmth and uh, the openness. But hoping that, I've had so many moms ask me, what do I do with my four-year-old so he's as open at 14 as he is at four? <laughs> and that's, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But we, I like the question you I'm not in any way, you understand, I'm not making fun of it. Oh, yeah. All right. Couple more. How can I be uh, helpful to you? Yeah. Um, my name is David. I'm the head of the math department at Lombardi's. Okay. And so from a math standpoint, uh, when I went to school in the early 90s, graduated from Howard then too, the push was, well, girls aren't doing well in math. you got to help them do better in math. And now I've seen it split. Yeah. Um, I've seen girls who are doing much better than boys right. for a variety of, yep. of reasons. So I kind of want to know some of your thoughts on that. And just in my own personal teaching, I've noticed over the last two years of night in honors advanced students, and even with the, with the lower level, lower level students, is that the boys don't come in or accept help. Even if I go to them and try to pull them to me, right. they, they don't want it. And the girls will regularly come in and get help, and right. therefore it just increases their performance, and the boys just don't grow. Right. And as we are doing more and more stuff here with you know, state testing and national standards, our boys need to close that gap, right. and then you add into if they're African American or Hispanic, and the different variables there. It's, it's been a hard battle. And whatever clues I can get to help my staff. Have you tried a boys' help session? Boys' only help session. Um, I have tried that with, with my students. And how did it go? Uh, one student came. Okay. And then I asked, how come? Well, because all the other guys said they weren't coming. So also became a social event, which I was kind of I thought that was a positive thing. They're doing something they wanted to do together. Yeah. Um, which a lot of guys that did, and sometimes it's a, it's a case of let's do an activity together. Yes. And then that works well for them. Right. But, um, but I haven't tried it more. I mean, it was one of those typical education things where I thought it was a good idea and tried it, and it didn't work very well. Right. So I haven't tried it again. Right. And it doesn't mean it was a bad idea in the first place. Yes. Do you threaten them that they, their grades would go down if they didn't come? Uh, <coughs> no. I mean, I need more maybe. No. Or, or yeah. offer them bonus points. They well, yes, 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 that type of uh, you know, try to bribe them or food works, you know, for sometimes. Yeah, it does. Sometimes food will, will help them come. Right. And I have I have review sessions at a local restaurant, um, and more boys come to that. But they're not asking me for help. They're flirting with the girls, or they're working amongst themselves. So. Right. Boys work in groups. Boys take help. In alone for help means that you're admitting that you're weak. And David, you and I know that's not right. Right. That's not uh, acceptable to the boy identity because we've been trying to look strong. But we're not. But you you put your finger on I think one of the biggest issues, which is in in nineteen seventy one when they first gave the national 
test for the genius level. And so maybe women are good in high school math, but they can't cut it in, in math, you know, in, in higher math than graduate school. Or is it the fact that women know that they're, if they become a professor of mathematics, they're not going to have a lot of jolly? Is it, do they get a, I mean, it's very interesting because their biology and culture still play a part um, in shaping girls' destiny in that. But for right now, girls are outperforming boys in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. And we have more women going into medical school than men. In fact, 60% of you wear this. seeing is this is a problem all over the first world and I believe it's a problem um, in the, the countries followed by the OECD which follow 27 or 28 of first world countries. This means all of Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and Israel, and all the first world. This is a problem all over
know that have the top universities uh, at, at risk. They don't, they don't do homework, right? Is they it a gender fight. thing or a personality thing? Well, there are many different personalities of boys and girls. What do you think? Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've made some startling and shocking and frightening observations with the boys in my low-level math class. Um, and it, again, I just, I, I wondered, is it, is it a, is it, do they all have a common personality or is it gender related? Like, you know, at the end of the quarter, I had a worksheet and I said, you know, let's decide as a class, and I knew what I was going to do all along, do we want, do we want to make this worth five bonus points or do we all want to get a piece of candy for completing our worksheet? And right. across the board, the boys all said, we want candy, Mrs. Right. Nelson. And the girls all said, no, we want points. We want points. Don't listen to them. So, but I, I don't, didn't know if it was just, you know, a different, a different personality type that, that fails to see, that fails to think of the future or fails to think of um, how the present affects the future. Mm -hmm. um, and if it is gender related at all. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a question. Is it all the boys, if you, if you do do candy, do they still do it? Or do they say, Oh, um, well, no, I mean, they, they, they do it for the most part. I basically said, okay, we're going to do both. <laughs> I got my candy, and girls are right, you need the points. <laughs> All right, well, then behavioral psychologists would smile, because they say if you, you, you have to find out if you're going to reward somebody, you've got to find out what they're rewarding. Look, the, you've asked, uh, tell me your name. Sharon. Sharon. You asked the basic question, is it nature or is it nurture? Is this, a, are there boy personality types? Or are there girl personality types? Um, and I'll give you my short course in the, the statistics of gender, okay? Um, the, the first thing you need to know is that if you gave psychological tests, every psychological test that could ever be given, if you gave them all to girls, tens of thousands of tests, it would be horrible and cruel. But if you gave them, they would fall out on a bell-shaped curve, right? Everything human does. So you have geniuses here in the middle, the handicapped here, and the average in the middle, right? Uh, every, everything psychological falls out that way, everything human does. Um, if you then gave all the same tests to boys, and you had them uh, the two bell-shaped curves, and you superimposed one on the other, they'd be 85 to 90 percent overlap. If they weren't, coeducation would be a terrible idea, actually. They were two separate populations. That you shouldn't educate them together. But they're 85 to 90 percent overlap. But what's interesting is you can, um, you picture the two bell-shaped curves, and they're 90 percent overlapping, you're going to have a shoulder here and a shoulder here, right? And much of what we say is feminine and much of what we say is masculine is the behavior that appears on the shoulders in the non-overlapping part, even though they're very small. That's often how we define what's masculine and, and feminine. Um, wow, thank you. Back. So, um, So what I'm saying is, these are the, the things that we say, you know, boys are like this, right? And girls are like this. When in fact, they're largely the same, but boys are very active, boys are very competitive. Okay? Girls are sweet, lovely, empathic, caring, right? Quiet, whatever. Um, I mean, that all of the research is that we start framing children's knowledge of their gender from the beginning. You know, I mean, it's all been done in the hospital. You know, isn't she beautiful? Newborn, or isn't she beautiful? Isn't she sweet? Isn't she? Isn't he handsome? Look how strong. Right? What a big boy. Okay? We start right from the get go, emphasizing certain things. And which, and kids absorb that. They know what's, what's going to be um, emphasized.
emphasize unless, of course, you get an odd guy. Um, who is the, uh, I read this about that famous Romanian gymnastics coach. Remember who he said? Nadia Comaneci, a number Be of other Bella Caroli. Yeah. Bella Caroli, yes. Yeah. Bella Caroli, when his daughter was born, he walked into the hospital room, picked her up by her hands, did nothing to support her head. She was a newborn. Okay. He picked her up by her hands and held her up by her hand. A newborn like this. And when she was able to hold herself up, he said, she's going to be a great gymnast. <laughs> Is that a crazy father? <laughs> but, but he knew what he wanted for his own daughter. Um, and so we know that, we know that boys and girls are more human than they are in gender. Their, their need for love and affection and guidance and teaching and limits and boundaries, all of that is the same. So psychologically, boys and girls are much more human than they are gender. Now, second level, if you take two girls at random under the girl bell-shaped curve, and you, co you compare two girls at random on any trait, the two girls are going to be more different from one another then boys and girls are different on that trait. And then statistical language, it's within group variance is greater than between group variance. Another way to say it is there are many ways to be a girl in this world. And there are many ways to be a boy. I'm the father of two children, both adopted, so they don't have my same uh, skills or weaknesses. Um, but my daughter was a tremendous athlete, and she came home one day in sixth grade and said about Maureen, who was next door. Joy was playing on select uh, soccer team in town. She said, Dad, Maureen isn't going to play town soccer anymore. She wants to be a cheerleader. She said, she's such a girly girl. <laughs> okay, what my daughter was actually saying was, Maureen and I differ dramatically on the trait of athletic competitiveness. It's not that Maureen was on coordinator and she's very good at it, but she didn't feel like competing. And my daughter was uh, played on three varsity teams all four years in high school and was captain of two teams. She was a sensational athlete. Um, my son was going to art school. He never wanted to be at the team. Not athletic in the not remotely athletic. Doesn't care about the Red Sox, the Patriots, mm -hmm. the Celtics, or the Bruins. He really whoosh, doesn't care at all. So I have in my own house um, the uh, gender stereotype busting girl and a gender stereotype busting boy. And so does everybody. Everybody has kids that don't exactly fit. So why do I go around talking about the boys? And why do I talk about girls? It's because they're, they're if you go up to the top of the girl bell shape curve, drop that down, the average girl and the average boy, the average girl and the average boy are meaningfully and significantly different. On three dimensions which really matter in school. One is that by school age, three quarters of the boys in school are more physically active than any girl in the so then, on the, the, the issue of physicality, you only have one quarter of that. Okay? Which is why it's hard to run the kindergarten. Because you've got all the girls sitting, waiting for, you know, story time and share time. And you've got a couple of the boys, and you've got other boys wandering around, and you go to collect them. And boys start pig piling on each other and wrestling, right? <laughs> because the physical experience at school is dramatically different for boys and girls. It's dramatically different. And boys run into problems in school because of their physicality. They are also developmentally immature in comparison to girls of the same age. This shouldn't be news to anybody, right? And they're more impulsive. So what is it the seventh grade girls say about seventh grade boys every day, five times a day? What? They are so immature.
immature. Did you not say that to seventh grade boys to their face when you were a seventh grade girl? Absolutely. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it. You said, said no. <laughs> They're so immature. They're so immature. <laughs> um, of course, boys are behind girls' development. But in, especially in the maturity and <coughs> uh, dimension. That's obvious. Girls, the second thing that makes a huge difference is that girls take the language more quickly on that. Girls sort language out faster. They process language in both hemispheres of the brain, and boys don't. Not as easily. Girls are more efficient processors of language. Their word retrieval is faster. Now, there's a big debate about whether um, uh, women t actually talk more than men. Um, uh, did you ever see Rob Becker's uh, uh, Defending the Game? Anybody ever see that? Remember, he had a great joke. He said the reason um, uh, the main tension in marriage is that women are, uh, I'm a quote of 7,000 words to say every day, and a man has 2,000 words, and by the time he comes home at night, he's used up his quota. <laughs> <laughs> but his wife still has 5,000 words. It was, a, it, was, uh, it was absolutely a surefire joke. I stole that from Rob Becker. I always give him credit. Wasn't that an amazing joke? My, I dragged my wife, she tells me a lot of spitting an arm, it's scratching, and we both walked out there thinking, boy, yeah, nail uh, gender differences. And his plea is not to judge men, just because they don't get up and all go to the kitchen to get the chips together. <laughs> but rather, they sit around and tease one another until they can get some guy to take, go get the chips. Uh, whereas all women stand up and go in because they wouldn't want somebody <laughs> and he talks about it's just different. Uh, anyway, girls are more efficient processors of language. The elementary school classroom is four this language based. So how do boys feel when they get to school? They're more restless. They're more impulsive. They can't sit still. And sitting still is what's bad news. And they're in a, a huge language gap. They want to be moving constantly, and that's annoying to teachers. Um, it is tough to work out. Is there an elementary school teacher? Anybody? No? Um, when No Child Left Behind came in, there were 97% of uh, elementary schools in the United States had a meaningful recess. Uh, that's now down to 60%. Um, because teachers are so frightened um, by this politician who's meddling in school, about which I have no feeling for this one child. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we, we cut out, they cut out recess. And the number one punishment for elementary school boys is taking recess away. I'm somebody who believes devoutly that if you gave uh, boys two re recesses a day, they like school better, do better. Uh, absolutely. Um, because they feel pent up all the time. I mean, like school. Only one teacher in my entire career said this to me. But I it was quite memorable. I had an elementary school teacher who said to me, I love children. I just have a problem with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, you know what that is? That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is back story on this is whenever we were filming Kevin, we had five men there. We had a, a producer, an associate producer, a first cameraman, a second cameraman, and a sound man. And all of these guys were brilliant documentary filmmakers. Sound man just got back from Africa with Oprah. And these guys had done National Geographic. Discovery. They were incredible. Um, every one of them identified completely with Kevin. Jason, the cameraman, was 32. He moved physically more than Kevin. Um, and it was he who chased Kevin down the back stairs. I wasn't there when Kevin set up his walk. 
it was Jason the cameraman who did that wonderful impromptu. I don't know, I have to walk around the building. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> right? Um, that's the boy experience of school. And what I know about boys is that if you endlessly threaten them with the importance of school, if you always threaten them, they just come to hate school. They just turn on and back away. Screw you. It's not a game you can win. The hell with it. And I've seen boys from all ages just move away from school. It's a girl thing. When I moved from co-ed school, where I'd been a consultant for over a decade, and I moved to an old boys school, I went to a class, a 10th grade uh, math class. Uh, Mr. Sweeney was teaching it. And the boys said, this boys school where I'm now the supervising psychologist, um, many of them repeat before they come to us, both in hopes of being able to play at a very high level, like I'm at an athletic powerhouse school. And academically, many of them have to really come up to speed, because it's also academically a very, very tough school, very tough. We just had 160 applicants for 20 places in ninth grade. So it's, it's very selective. And <coughs> many of our boys are older, so you get a 10th grade math class, and they're all huge at 16 and a half. You know. And they all come in with their backpacks, which they carry all the time with everything they own in it, because they have no organizational ability. But they have very strong backs. So <laughs> carry everything. So they all come in and they go, Vroom. And uh, Mr. Sweet said, everybody got a pencil? <laughs> How about a piece of paper? How about a math book? He said, gentlemen, let's do math. And I suddenly realized how many times in a co-ed school I had seen teachers say, come on, guys, come on. Would you get, hey, would you get your stuff? Come on, would you get your stuff? Look, the girls have been ready for five minutes here. Would you guys, right? Look, you're wasting our time. And the moment you do that, the moment you define school time as teacher and girl time, you, you're losing it, right? Um, I, we speculated a lot about why boys have fallen behind or why they're not keeping up. Boys in U.S. education are not falling behind compared to where they were 30 years ago. They just haven't moved at all. And girls have gone by them. In the NAEP in 1971, girls outperformed boys in writing by 28 points and by reading in 14 points, and it's almost exactly the same. The average 11th grade boy in the United States writes at the level of the average 8th grade boy. In the 70s, I was in a ton of schools that were trying to get girls over their math focus, but I'm still hearing teachers say, so frustrated. Boys don't like to write, can't get them to write. You know, we ask them to write in their journal. You're David Goldswatch, right? Or not? Yeah, David, what is a journal to a fifth grade boy? You should see his face. <laughs> it's a diary, I suppose. Why don't boys want to write? Why don't a fifth grade boy want to write in a diary? Well, all right, but if, aside from that, is there any way you could get a boy to a form of life? Yes, if you could hook them on something that they would find remotely interesting. <laughs> right? You should hear it. Did you hear his tone of voice? Because <laughs> the boy is in the man, right? Um, you know, uh, I was in New Zealand um, a, 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 a few years back when uh, All Blacks lost the French rugby team because of two late calls on the part of British rappers. All anybody can talk about it. But if you had asked a, a voice in New Zealand to write an essay on why the British, whether the British judges' calls had been good or should the had the all black you know, every boy in New Zealand would have written an essay about that with passion and fervor. I mean, the problem is elementary school teachers don't want to read essays about that stuff, for the most part. They want to read journals, 
which everybody knows is actually in a diary. <laughs> and you're supposed to share your feelings, mm -hmm. don't want to do it, <laughs> right? So when we talk to boys about their writing, we have to be talking to them about what they want to write about. But many boys have been discouraged from writing because they went here up here and they weren't allowed to write violent stories. Why, why are boys not allowed to write violent stories? Can anybody here know the scientific connection, correlation between writing violent stories and becoming a violent person? Is there any? Well, we think there might be. Ah, oh, that's science at its best. Yeah. <laughs> because every violent boy has written something violent. Whenever right. they write something violent, <laughs> yeah. you think this might happen. Yeah. Uh, I better have the, a psychologist see him. Of, uh, uh, what is the situation of men in jail and writing and reading? Well, what don't. is the what is in fact the case? They don't. They don't. Forty percent of men in jail are illiterate. Many of the remaining 60% are functionally illiterate. It is not learning to read and write that makes you a potential <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's not writing violent stories that makes you violent. But oh my goodness, I everywhere I go, people are trying to discourage, get boys to write story. Kindergarten boys write stories that go, well, kindergarten girls write stories that people like this. One day, Panda and the horse <laughs> and the corn met in the park, and they all went home for sleepover. That's a classic kindergarten story. story. Okay, kindergarten boy in my movie named Seth wrote the following story: A horse and a unicorn were best friends. Then an old man killed the horse, so the unicorn killed the old man, and the unicorn lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> aliens better come too. Yeah, they take the bodies away. Yeah. So, but uh, um, Tom Newkirk, who wrote a brilliant book called uh, Misreading Masculinity, Boys, Literacy, and Pop Culture, very thin, concise book, was once watching two third grade boys um, during writing period, and they were sitting across from each other, the, their desk arrangement, each with a blank piece of paper and each with a pencil. And one boy said, the guy picked up a machine gun and they chased the other guy around the corner and the guy jumped into a doorway, but then the first guy waited for him when he came out, he shot him. The second boy said, you know, the one spaceship was, that had a laser thing and he was chasing another and he blew him up. And they, the two boys went on telling extended narrative. Neither of them ever picked up a pencil. And Tom went over and said, why not? Why are you guys not writing? It's writing period. And boy said, oh, we're not allowed to write violent stories. <laughs> so you have boys with an extended narrative in their heads who are forbidden to write. And Tom Newkirk uh, makes the, the, a very, very strong case that boys, if you gave them the lineup of the American League, you know, uh, standings at the end of the baseball season, and said, why are the teams in this order? Why? Write me an essay, why the teams are in this order? That many boys would be able to write quite an extended essay about that. But teachers don't actually want boys to write about pop culture or write about sports. They want them to write about deep and meaningful things. The problem is that men and women, for reasons we do not entirely understand, and it goes back to your question about is it a personality difference? Boys and girls split in terms of play between three and four years old. In every school, in every culture, in every society, in every religion in the world, boys and girls start who have played together at one and two start to play in gender exclusive groups. The girls started by pulling away and saying the boys play too rough. And boys do indeed wrestle and fight hunt and chase more than girls. And boys and girls play separately between age of three and age of 11. By the time you have talked with girls and played fantasy play and played house and stuff like that and done that for years and talked about clothes, your tastes are shaped by girls. That is, you may have had a pretty much girl brain at three, but you have a much more girl brain at 11 because you've had eight years of training as a girl. If you're a boy, you may have had, a, if you will, 
got a, a brain that could have been anything. But by 11, you've got a very boy brain. And that's just true of us. Our brains are trainable. And we lay down the tracks. And boy play and boy interest lay down, lay down tracks. And boy humor, tell me your name. Matt. Matt. Matt, I presume that you were not, in fact, a big fighter. Okay, but I recognize, now you and I have never met before, but I recognized your humor immediately. I know that boy humor, right? I'm going to be asked about whether physical fighting, and it's not something I do. I, was, I, I hated being a kid. I loathed football. I, all of that stuff, never, but I was verbally quick. So I recognize that's, that's a kind of thing. How many women? would have said something like what Matt said. Did you hear, remember what he said? I, I don't have to find out everybody's so intimidated. Right? He said, that is, that's, that's boy stuff. Those tracks for that kind of humor is laid down. And men never give that up, do they? Right? Um, so when you say that the boys owe one penny and the girls owe one the extra points, the girls know they're going to get an enormous amount of social support for that. A girl will say, hey, points, the hell with points, I like a piece of candy. I'm not going to say anything. She's not going to say anything because she knows the girl thing to say, oh, extra points. And the boy knows that if he says extra points, what's going to happen to him? <laughs> what? He'll get hammered, right? Absolutely. He's going to hear about it. So the boys and the girls, when you ask them that, they are going to play in characteristic boy and girl ways. And that continues. It's only when you get to middle adolescence, that is 14 or 15, that you begin to think, actually, the definition of masculinity is way too narrow for me. Right? Or the definition of femininity is way too narrow. You know, middle school, that kind of in, in what's called gender intensification in middle school, where you have to be beautiful and popular and fashionable and not give me a break, right? Um, and it's one of the things that girls' schools try and do by putting girls in uniforms and giving them just, they, they just de-intensify all of that stuff. Though I once asked a girls' school in Baltimore they were all wearing uniforms that they had on different um, uh, running shoes. We all had on running shoes. I said to anybody, I said, can anybody tell me the price of all the running shoes in this room? And we'll go right through it. You know, from $45 to $160. She just went bing, 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 went right around the room. I thought, okay. They should have stayed with the old uniform shoes, right? If you really want it, but um, those are kind of things we're kind of uh, uh, those are things we're trying to, and then you can't separate what is personality because the individual boy is an individual, is a boy brain. He's he's been programmed that way, and you can be lots of things. I mean, I'm arguing being intellectual, uh, and I didn't like sports at all, but. I can enter the conversation. I know how to talk. I read in the paper about sports and don't go for it. But I know it gives me some credibility to be able to talk about it, you know? So I keep up my head. You know, I mean, it's. it's uh, but you later define yourself as different to boys at middle school age. And the boys you were talking about were. Well, I would say they're very immature, right. but they are 18. They're mainly seniors, right. but I think they're lagging in the maturity yeah, levels. They are. <laughs> they are. They are. Yes. And, and school hasn't worked for them. Right. Yeah, this is the lowest math group you were saying? Yeah, school hasn't worked for them. So they're doing their time, you know? 